today we are talking about how to get your diabetes under control very quickly. Let's get started. So guys, before we jump to the topic, I want to encourage you to take the quiz in the description below to win a chapter from my diabetes book. Let's move on. So guys, number one, that's not a rocket science or nothing new, but I'll give you a few tricks about it. But the number one is low carb, right? So again, remember, I didn't say no carb because I see all the time that people fail to stick to no carb diet because a lot of things have carbs. It's like telling somebody to breathe less, you know, it's like everywhere. It's getting into you, okay? So the carbs are not necessarily bad and there are a lot of good carbs out there. And in this channel, we talk about the glycemic index, you know, the good carbs, the bad carbs. So the education is the key. So understand your carbs. And even if they are low glycemic index, even if they are low in glycemic load, you still have to maintain the portion control and go with the low carb. So how do you do that? You know, it's very simple and people don't think about it, right? If you put very little fruits in a big cup, that's not gonna feel good. You're gonna be like, uh, what the hell, you know, that's too little. But if you put that same fruit in a small cup, it's gonna almost overflow, and you're gonna think like, oh wow, yeah, that's a lot of food here, you know? It's psychologically, it's a lot better. So controlling and adjusting your plate will be very important. So knowing your carbs, understanding the carbs, and keeping the portion size small will be great. Even for dinner, right? So when you can have a plate like this, or you're gonna have a plate like this, right? And you will still fill your plate, and, you know, you can determine how much carb you're gonna put on there. You can put healthy carbs in one fourth of that plate, right? So that you know you're eating low carb. Now, you may be saying that oh, I eat no carbs already. Well, good for you. But a lot of people, unfortunately, then don't watch this video right now. But if you're having trouble controlling yourself, you can't stop eating carbs too much. That's the way to go. Another trick for you guys is basically eating slow. Now, a lot of people don't understand that our brain actually takes time to realize, and it's not your brain's fault, because think about this, you start eating something, it has to go to your stomach and then to your intestine, it has to get absorbed, and then it has to go to your brain, etc. By that time, you can actually fill your stomach three times because your stomach is actually a pretty small, hollow organ, and you can stuff it pretty quickly. But by the time your brain realizes that you are full, is generally too late but if you're eating slowly and chewing for a long time number one you are getting the taste more because when you chew more your saliva is going to mix with the food you're gonna taste it better especially if you have problems with dry mouth etc drink water for example when you're eating that's gonna also help uh, with the with the saliva as well but if you're chewing longer and eating in a longer time you're gonna realize that before you finish your plate you're gonna feel full and don't feel guilty of not finishing your plate you know our families used to say that oh you know finish your plate and my I remember my father he's still alive by the way he still doesn't say thing uh, <laughs> he will eat rice and he will take the last tiny bit of rice from the plate and eat it I'm like dad why are you doing that he's like i don't want to waste food i'm like you're wasting yourself so you know you gotta choose something you want to waste food or you want to if you don't want to waste food don't put too much in your plate to begin with and if you're gonna fill your plate and try to finish that plate then you're wasting yourself so i'd rather waste food than wasting myself right the number two is stay away from refined carbs. That's kind of an extension of the rule number one. But the refined carbs are everywhere, right? So when you look at the label, sometimes you guys you learned already by watching this channel, you know, how to understand the labels and what is total carbs, what is sugar, what is glucose, what is carbs. Total carbs is important, but you have to look at the fiber content on that label as well. So if there's no fiber, it's totally just carbs and mostly even sugars, then you know that that's gonna mess with your blood sugars pretty quickly, pretty easily. So Avoid all these candy bars, all the foods that are not natural, not given by God, made by human. I would suggest stay away from those. That's going to be your best bet. The number three, you have to incorporate exercise. Now, how do you do that? It's easier said than done. Everybody's busy, you know, people have problems, family problems, financial problems, stress in their life, and exercise is the last thing to think about. But I always tell my patients and myself too, and I do what I preach. You know, I have to. But you gotta do the exercise first. If you get the exercise done first, then the rest can be done. But if you don't do exercise first, exercise will be too difficult by the time everything else is done. So you have to prioritize that exercise routine 30 minutes. And how do you exercise really? You know, people say, oh, I take my dogs out, you know, so I, I wait for them to poop. Well, that's not really exercise. So you have to keep going and you have to keep your heart rate up. So if you wanna know what your heart rate should be, you can look at this 
calculation here. That is basically showing you the maximum heart rate. Again, you don't want to go to your maximum heart rate calculation. So you can go to your 70% you know, if you're a starter, maybe 60% of your maximum heart rate. And then you can try to go all the way, if, you're, if your fitness is better, up to 80-85% of your maximum heart rate. Again, you don't want to try to go to your maximum heart rate. You know, you don't want to try to see if you're going to have a heart attack or not. But getting the heart rate up is very important. And keeping it up for 30 minutes is extremely important. Now, number four is eat more fiber. So eating fiber helps you in many ways because it basically slows down the absorption. So there is a difference between the blood sugar spiking like this or like this, right? So this is not a really a spike. When you're eating fiber, your blood sugar is rising slowly and allowing your body to be able to process that. But when you don't eat fiber, all the carbs are rushing to your blood. And even if you have some insulin left and you, you're able to make insulin, you're not going to be able to keep up with that gush of sugar coming in. It's just not possible. Even healthy individuals, when they eat like that, their blood sugar can go up to 150, 160, even when they're not diabetic. So we have to have fiber. If you cannot have fiber, if you hate vegetables, I would say at least go take some fiber supplements like Metamucil or something like that, that will help create some bulk in your system. And number five, drink more water. Now, some people uh, tend to think that the water will bring your blood sugar down. Well, that's not true. But if you don't drink water, your blood sugar can go up. So it's not necessarily the same thing, right? So when you're dehydrated, the concentration of the sugar in the blood will look higher. As simple as that. But when you drink enough water, you will be able to excrete that. Uh, you will be able to dilute that sugar in your blood. Also, when you don't drink, sometimes your brain actually mix up the signals between the thirst and hunger and you may end up reaching out to carby things like you know it happens to me too like for example if i'm if i'm thirsty i want to go eat some watermelon or some peaches that are some juicy carby stuff but actually if you were not thirsty to begin with you wouldn't crave for those carby things as well so staying hydrated is very important also we talked about the other drinks like green tea some coffee tea etc those things actually can help burn fat and can keep your appetite down and can keep yourself busy sometimes because we are like you know we are, we are a creature of habits we tend to just keep our mouth full you know we just want to eat stuff or drink stuff you know that's or smoke you know that's one of the reasons when people stop smoking they end up gaining weight because they want to keep busy there so if that's the case instead of having you know high calorie beverages that you used to do which a lot of people have problems with coke and pepsi or tea in south when i say tea we have this special tea that uh, nobody else drinks in south except the people in south like us we drink it not that i do but a lot of people in south do and there's non-sweet tea but very rare people really choose that but it's something called sweet tea and people love that and that's the number one killer when i practiced in alabama that was my number one enemy in my practice because pretty much 99% of my patients drank sweet tea and that was not acceptable. So guys, also use vinegar. So, if, and try to stay away from, that's number six, I think. So you need to stay away from ready-made salad dressings that are high in calorie, high in carbs. You really need to stick to your homemade dressings. My favorite dressing is olive oil, lemon, you know, some spices there you can mix. And that is the most common Mediterranean or Italian or Greek, whatever you call it. Dressing is your best friend and it's going to keep you full, especially on top of dra on, on salad. Plus vinegar has, especially apple cider vinegar, has a lot of medicinal features, can help your blood sugars, etc. So use that to your advantage. And number seven, you have to manage stress. So when you are stressing out about everything, your cortisol levels, your stress hormones will be high. And guess what? Those hormones don't like the insulin. They will be creating a barrier for insulin to function and as a result you will not be able to control your diabetes now how do you manage stress well there's many ways to do it i'm not going to try to be a psychologist here but if you do need a psychologist it's not a bad idea to talk to a psychologist you can get support from family and friends as well we can do yoga you just have to take care of yourself instead of starting instead of stressing about other people and everything else around you now number eight you have to monitor your blood sugars you know because if you don't really 
monitor your blood sugars, you will not know where you stand. Now, and I'm not advertising here, but like a lot of continuous monitoring systems, my patients will tell me that once they start using those Dexcom or Libre, whatever the brands out there, they will be able to see how food is affecting their blood sugars and that feedback teaches them a lot. So a lot of people, for example, don't check their blood sugar after meals. They just check it in the mornings, which is a mistake because how will you know if your blood sugars are high or not after meals if you are not checking them? And that's number one reason why A1C remains high, although your blood sugars in the morning is okay. So because you don't know, you're spiking after meals and only way to know is to check. So check your blood sugar, monitor them, understand, use that as an information instead of a punishment, instead of judging yourself or, you know, considering a failure if the blood sugars are high, use that information rather for informational purposes and to find ways to improve your blood sugars. And number nine is getting enough sleep. I know a lot of you don't get enough sleep and there's a lot of problems around the sleep hygiene. Some of it is because of anxiety, some of it is because of maybe medical factors. You know, for guys, it could be a prostate problem. If they are getting up every two hours, they're not gonna be able to sleep. Uh, there are some medications that can cause you to go to bathroom like 20 times a day. Like there are some SGLT2 inhibitors, some of you are on like Jardians, Farsiga, uh, Invocon, etc and if these are medications are keeping you up all night long it may not be a bad idea to consider an alternative option because again you have to have your sleep now what happens when you don't sleep your body again creates a lot of stress hormones and especially your fasting blood sugars are going to be very high because of those stress hormones now lastly eat foods high in chromium and magnesium. Now, these things are, again, found in the healthy food that we keep talking about, right? So partially whole grains, not too much, because whole grains can also mess with your blood sugar, but especially nuts, seeds, avocados, uh, olive oil, green leafy vegetables. These are going to provide the chromium and magnesium that you need, because chromium and magnesium, they have important role in your glucose metabolism and diabetes management. So you have to make sure that you are getting these naturally in your diet in order to get your diabetes under control. So guys, if you can do all of these at the same time, very disciplined fashion, I promise you your blood sugars will get better. I'm not going to promise you that your blood sugar will normalize because all of you are different. You all have different backgrounds and different amount of capacity to make insulin, your body weight, etc. But all of you will get some results. Most of you will get very good results by using these techniques in your daily life life. So I hope that helps. If it does, please give a like, uh, give a thumbs up, and share this video. And if you are not subscribed, please do so. So guys, before you go, please remember to take the quiz. Taking quizzes will allow you to understand and absorb that information that you're getting from this video today. Plus, you will have a, the chance to win a chapter from the Ultimate Diabetes book. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.